Hey guys, welcome back to the Medbros channel. In today's video, I wanna talk about how to get honors in every rotation during medical school and the stuff that I did that uh, helped me to achieve that. So if you're interested, keep on watching. And uh, I know I've been MIA on this channel for a little bit. I mean, I've been here and there. I, like, I've, I think I've been more frequent this year. If you want specific updates on what I've been doing, all you have to do is go down and hit that notification bell and I should have a lot of those videos uploaded uh, in the near future. I've actually recorded like a lot of the footage, uh, but it just takes like longer to edit uh, some of that kind of content. Okay, so as a general understanding of how clinical rotations work and how you're evaluated, uh, so in your third year of medical school, uh, traditionally you are in different rotations. So like psychiatry, um, internal medicine, family medicine, um, surgery. So you have these different rotations and you're evaluated and given a grade in each of them. So not pass, uh, pass, high pass, honors. I think there's some differences between the medical schools, but that's like the basic outline. And um, so to get honors in each of these, the main people evaluating you are uh, the residents that you work with and the attending, the like attending physicians that you work with. And so they're gonna evaluate you on your knowledge, your clinical skills, um, your attitude, your professionalism, et cetera, et cetera, and then give you uh, like a resulting grade. The first thing that I wanna make clear to everyone is you actually don't have to be a walking medical encyclopedia to get honors in these rotations. I think that's a common misconception coming into medical school in your first and second year. You're like, I have to know almost everything in order to impress my attendings during my third year in order to get honors. And that's not true. That leads me to my first piece of advice, which is to focus on the very specialized information that is gonna come up during your rotation. And I know that as a first and second year, that actually might be hard to like figure out. But on the other side of things, I can see like, okay, they're gonna ask you about these specific arteries during your ob gyn rotation, um, during like a surgery where you're taking out the ovaries or the uterus. So there are very common things that you'll be asked during each rotation, either by talking to the classmates who have already done the rotation earlier in the year. So if you're doing it in like September and you have classmates who have taken an ob gyn rotation in February, um, they'll let you know. There's a lot of online resources. Um, I don't know if I'll be making like specific videos of like knowledge and things to know before going into each rotation. This also applies to your clinical skills and reasoning as well. Uh, so if you're on your internal medicine rotation, you obviously should know a lot about like heart failure, about lung diseases, and you need to worry less about the uh, like the enzymes in like the Krebs cycle, for instance. While like some attendings might pimp you on that, pimp is just like asking questions when you're like rounding or whenever. Okay, Jillian, time to shine. What's wrong with this patient? Um, well, she has abdominal pain. Okay, genius, why don't you tell me the cure for cancer while you're at it? I mean, it could be a lot of things, right? Shouldn't we take a full history and physical? Oh, ho, ho, big tough medical student coming here. You wanna do the whole history and physical? Big tough guy, what are you gonna do next? You gonna intubate my patient? Hey, hey, Jim! Jim, you wants to intubate my patient? This is a medical student. <laughs> what, what are you gonna ask for next? Open a heart surgery? Why don't you just open? He went, hey, hey, Sammy! Sammy, my medical student wants to do open heart surgery. <laughs> He's a third year. Um, while you might be asked like a rare question on very specialized knowledge, uh, one, that won't make you look bad if you don't know like very obscure stuff. Um, and then two, uh, it's just low yield. You should really focus only on those specific skills that you'll probably be asked to demonstrate on that rotation. So for example, for internal medicine, um, like your presentations in the morning are extremely important in showing that you know how to synthesize the information about the patient you're covering. The third tip that I can tell you is to associate yourself with people on the rotation that are like-minded to you. Uh, so for me during my rotation, uh, the residents that I hanged out with, the attendings that I um, went down and said, oh, can I do this procedure with you? Can I uh, come down and see this patient with you? Um, I latched onto those people who are more like-minded, who are like more uh, like agreeable people, who are like more kind-hearted people, 
um, who are like more helpful and willing to teach. So I think choosing the people you associate yourself with on the rotation and then later on choose, um, I think most schools allow you to choose who evaluates you. So I mean, if you're working with these attendings and residents that um, are helpful and you have them evaluate you later on, that'll probably work a lot better for you than going to like people that are like hard asses and then getting pimped uh, viciously by them, not knowing what you're talking about, and then getting a poor evaluation. Uh, so I think sometimes you might like go to like the big wigs or something and then in a, in a rotation like, oh, this person is the chair of this department, I'm gonna go follow him and get an evaluation. Uh, yeah, that might not work out the best for you. Um, so definitely choose the people that you work with on your rotation wisely. And when you choose who to evaluate you, um, that'll be reflective um, in those evaluations, hopefully. I think in many areas, um, people will say, if you try your hardest, uh, things will work out for you. And in some cases, that's actually not the case. But I think in this case, during your medical rotations, where clearly there's people with so much more training over you, people who are like senior medical students, or people who are interns, residents, uh, like attending doctors, doctors who have been like practicing for like 50 years, you're obviously gonna have less knowledge than them, right? So I think that it's super important to genuinely be curious about the things that you're seeing, being willing to learn, um, being um, like engaged, being professional. I think that goes a long way in your evaluations actually. Um, during your medical school rotations. I think that that is like not BS. The second reason that you wanna be engaged and keep learning throughout the rotation is that it will be reflective of you throughout the rotation. So if you learn how to consult different departments, um, which is relatively simple, you just have to like learn on the first week or two how to do that. If you learn how to like order things in the chart system, obviously as a med student, it won't be approved, but it can be like, you can place it and then it'll be signed by like a resident. If you can learn like all these different things on your first and second week on like your internal medicine rotation, for instance, that will be um, like very helpful in the later weeks of your rotation and on later rotations. So you better know what you're doing because the med school rotations in your third year are kind of your first experience into a lot of these different fields. So um, if you don't know much about surgery, if you don't know much about like what happens on this specific unit. If you don't know much about how to manage like alcohol intoxication or opioid withdrawal and what is actually done um, at the hospital, uh, if you just learn that in the first week or two or the first time you see it, that will better prepare you for um, the patients you see, see later on. And sometimes the attendings and residents change during a rotation. So if you learn like, okay, this is the drugs used to manage opioid withdrawal, et cetera, et cetera, in like your first two weeks on your psych rotation, and then in the later two weeks, you see those same patients with a new attending, uh, you'll look a lot better when you know exactly how it's managed because you just saw it the week prior. So as I was saying before my camera died, um, it's super important to become comfortable, to become cool with, and to really ask your residents for as much help as possible. Because uh, it can be super helpful, especially early on in a rotation. You can even try asking um, like a resident, I'm not too familiar with how presentations work on this service. Uh, could I just like run quickly a presentation by you and see like what you think, what I should add, what I'm missing. Um, what I'm like taking too long on and what people don't really care about. Uh, so that when you do present, your attending isn't like, why are you talking for like 15 minutes? We do like three minute presentations on here. Uh, so I think it's super helpful to uh, really ask your resident for as much help as you need, especially early on, because uh, that can just like speed things up exponentially in getting you geared to do well during your rotation. Um, they can even help you with, if you're seeing a new patient, and um, you know, you're thinking of the assessment and the plan and what to do with this patient, you should work on it yourself, you should look it up, like UpToDate is a super, super helpful resource um, to like managing patients. 
Um, so you should up to date what you think will be helpful and then just run it by your resident um, before you talk to your attending. So be like, oh, I was thinking of these couple of things. Uh, do we want imaging for this patient? Do we not? Um, do we want to start them on this medication even though like their blood pressure is already a little low? Um, so that kind of thing. And they can be super helpful in um, not only explaining what to do, but the reason reasoning and the rationale behind it, uh, which uh, can help you when you're talking to your attending about what the plan is. Uh, so I think that becoming comfortable and cool with your residents is super, super helpful. And I think that not enough people um, like talk about and recommend that enough. This is kind of a similar point to the one I made earlier, but I just want to put it in there so that it's super clear. Um, run from like bad or negative energy, like the plague during your third year. So you're obviously gonna run into doctors or residents that are just toxic. And I, I would run as far as possible. All right, Julian, you got some homework to do tonight then. I want a full length report about what SOD is by tomorrow sharp. Will do, sir. Um, could you just let me know what SOD stands for, sir? You want me to tell you what, you know what? Forget it, forget the report. I'm gonna drop everything that I'm doing tonight. I'm not seeing any more patients. You know what? I'm, I'm taking the day off and I am gonna put together the best presentation about SOD just here. Hey, hey, Jim, Jim, he wants me to put together a presentation. He wants me to do his homework for him. Yeah, no, no, it's a third year medical student. I, I got it because yes, a heart failure stage four. She's dying. She's about to die tonight. And she wants, he wants a presentation. He wants a fresh. So for some people in my class that even included like, okay, here's my rotation that I just started. These people are crazy. And then they just like transfer to a different um, like site. Uh, Cause you do have, at least our, at our place, you do have some flexibility in choosing your sites. And the people are willing to work with you if you like have a real issue with where you're at. Um, so if you're at a site and you realize early on, like, oh man, this is not gonna work out. These people are not, uh, not exactly the business uh, then you get out of there as soon as possible and then try working with like other people on the rotation and obviously don't take anything personal on a rotation here's the last tip and I think that some people will actually not agree with me but I'm right and here it goes um, when you're on your rotations as a third year of med student, you do not want to overwhelm yourself and take a lot more than you can handle because that can lead to bad outcomes. So like if you're handling like eight patients as a third year of med student, even if you're handling like six patients, I couldn't do that. Like that is a ton of patients to handle yourself um, as a third year or even a second year in some schools. Um, I wouldn't recommend that. I would recommend like taking three patients and know what the heck you're talking about rather than taking the six and having a little more difficulty presenting, having a little more difficulty following like the clinical course of these patients. So I recommend taking a load that you can handle and that's manageable and that you can master versus taking more responsibilities and not know what you're doing. All right, well, that's the video. I hope that it helped. I'm sure that if you try, if you focus on learning the specific knowledge, the specific uh, like clinical skills that you need for each rotation, and then you take the other things that I said in this video into account, you are going to do fine on your rotations. It's actually, rotations are actually not even that um, like complex. Um, definitely, it will be draining. It'll take like a lot of your time. Med school, like all of the years are hard. Um, but overall, it's honestly not that bad and it's really manageable. And if you know what you're doing within like the first week or two where you have like a basic grasp of things, from there it's all downwards. So if you're nervous, don't be nervous and I hope this video has helped. Um, just make sure you hit that notification bell down below if you don't know where it is. I don't know either, just find it. Um, and I will see you in the next one. Later guys. Third year medical student.